Peter Ballas here, cardiologist. Now today we're focusing on a topic known as heart failure. What is this and what are some of the symptoms that you may experience? So heart failure or otherwise known as congestive heart failure is where the heart itself is not able to pump adequately to deliver blood and nutrients to the body. When the heart muscle itself becomes weaker and is unable to perform its activity, then we say that the heart begins to fail. Now, it's not the best term that we have around, you know, using the word fail, because I always like to see that is a challenge for uh, for the patient and the doctors to actually get the heart back to normal. And there's always the, uh, the aim in this condition. But when the heart isn't pumping, then we do term this as heart failure. We've had a separate video on how do we assess heart failure. And in particular, we focus on a measurement known as the ejection fraction or the EF. Now that is expressed as a percentage, but it's not out of 100. And that can be sometimes very confusing. But the ejection fraction is a measure of how the heart is able to pump the blood out efficiently. Now, if we use a very simple term and a simple way to look at this, if we can say that normal heart function means that half of the blood in the heart is ejected or pumped out every heartbeat, well, that's 50%. So more than 50% of the blood being pumped out equates to normal heart function. When there is a decline in that, then we start call, calling this you know, heart failure. And there are degrees, mild, moderate, severe, depending on how impacted the heart muscle is. So heart failure is a very common condition. It's predominantly a very chronic condition where people live with this for many, many years. They might be associated with many symptoms, and we'll talk about what these symptoms are. But frequently, people need to come into hospital to seek urgent care for a few days when they have developed these symptoms. The most common cause of why the heart starts failing is diseases of the arteries of the heart, or coronary artery disease. This affects the heart muscle by restricting blood flow, and that can be also in the setting of a heart attack, when somebody has had a blockage, and that has led to a period of time where the heart muscle has been starved of blood and oxygen, well then, that can be permanently damaged, can form scar tissue, and that scar tissue is not able to pump like normal cardiac muscle is, meaning that the heart muscle becomes weaker. There are several other causes that your doctor might be also assessing. One is valve conditions or valve diseases that affect those little valves in the heart that are opening and closing, taking blood from one part of the heart to another. And these valves, when they become leaky or when they become narrowed, can impact blood flow and that can also cause the heart to fail. Other Conditions and a common condition is one that we know of high blood pressure. Well, high blood pressure itself can also lead to the heart being impacted. And there are several ways the heart gets impacted. One is the heart is unable to pump the blood out of the heart or systolic heart failure. But equally, when the heart muscle becomes restricted, becomes stiffer as a result of high blood pressure over many, many years, well then the heart is not able to relax fully. And that can also lead to many of the symptoms of congestive heart failure. There are other conditions that affect the hormones. For example, thyroid disease can impact the heart. There are other conditions related to pregnancy that might also impact the heart stress-induced conditions that can affect the heart muscle, but also other congenital conditions and congenital heart disease, holes in the heart and various types of anomalies like that. There's another condition called hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, Hockham, 
uh, in short, that can also impact the way that the heart functions. Drugs can also do it. Drugs, alcohol, in excess can also have a bearing on the heart itself. Then we have other conditions that can affect it in terms of post an infection, post a virus. Particularly in the COVID period, we do see conditions affecting the heart, but also there have been some uh, uncommon but also important links with vaccines. It can also impact the heart muscle. And sometimes we don't find the cause. There might be various genetic factors that we just don't have enough information about that lead to the heart muscle being impacted. So let's focus on what are some of the symptoms of heart failure. Well, when the heart is not able to adequately pump, the most common types of symptoms are shortness of breath. And that occurs as a result of the buildup of fluid in the body. When the heart's not able to pump the fluid out or the blood out adequately, that fluid, that blood pools. It remains within the, the body, within the heart, within the lungs. And it often might be associated also with swelling, swelling of the ankles, edema. And that can extend up to the legs. And tiredness, feeling just run down, short of breath, tired, fluid building up. They're some of the common symptoms. In the acute setting, when somebody becomes very unwell acutely, they can have a condition whereby they are unable to lie flat, particularly in bed. And that is a medical term known as orthopnea. And we often have to prop one, oneself up in bed because lying flat means all the blood and fluid is collecting in the lungs and causing this congestion. There might be a sense of waking up overnight, not able to sleep adequately and acute shortness of breath. And that's also a sign that the fluid is building up and the heart may be failing. There may be links with rhythm problems of the heart, where the heart's racing, becomes irregular, and a condition known as atrial fibrillation. So all these symptoms can develop. There might be persisting cough or a sense of wheeze. And you might not be asthmatic, but people often describe this wheeze that we know as cardiac asthma. There might be cough with sputum, with phlegm, that is often frothy and has some pink tinge to it. That's obviously a sign of congestion. You may also develop weight gain that happens very, very quickly. And that weight gain is normally within the space of a day or two where you increase weight and that's a sign that fluid is building up and often the fluid builds up in the lungs and builds up in legs and ankles and the feet become quite swollen. And of course, any time we have any acute symptoms like chest pain, well, it is paramount that we do get that assessed urgently to make sure that there's nothing acute going on there. So heart failure itself can also lead to complications. It's not only that the heart muscle becomes weaker and is not able to pump, but that has a major role on other organs in our body. The kidneys, for example, are one of the key targets that we assess because we do know that those with heart failure can also develop kidney problems where the kidneys are not adequately being perfused, don't have enough blood going to the kidneys, and that can also impact then how the kidneys are functioning and filtering out all the toxins in our body. There may be conditions that affect the liver as a result of fluid congestion building up. Well, one of the sites that it can also develop is in the liver itself. So you might have pain around the, uh, the liver on the right upper quadrant, the right part of the tummy, and that sometimes you might actually get a sense of a pulsation, both also around the liver, where you feel your, your pulse um, pulsating, but also the veins in the neck become quite enlarged, and you see a very prominent wave in the venous pressure in the neck, and that's also another sign that your doctor will look for to give an indication about whether the heart has indeed developed congestion. So again, this video we focused on what heart failure is, namely the condition that impacts the heart muscle itself, what are the common causes with heart disease or the coronary artery disease being the primary cause, and also some of the symptoms that are encountered. In the next video, we're going to focus on specific therapies and management strategies that your doctor may 
institute and implement to improve your condition and restore normal heart function. Until the next video, bye for now.